you to be more bullish on stocks. Let's welcome in Josh and Cameron, both here at Post 9, Josh, a CNBC contributor. I got way ahead of myself on Apple's price, but we're not getting ahead of ourselves on these new records for all of the major averages. So I just ask you, is it time to get more bullish? I, well, I guess I guess I, I, I don't get more or less bullish based on price action because I'm not uh, a swing trader. But if you're somebody that's a little bit more short-term oriented and you're trading based on momentum, yes. Obviously, you're getting the green light here. You're getting confirmation everywhere you look. It doesn't matter what sector. It doesn't matter what overseas index. They're all flashing the same green light. And it's coinciding with the type of economic data that we've been waiting for and hoping for. The prices in the economy, the growth of prices in the economy moderating, but you've still got a very healthy job market, you've got the consumer still spending, and you really don't have anything in credit spreads or, or any kind of defaults or any of those things that we would have thought were guaranteed given the rate of interest rate increases that were going on over the prior 18 months. So when you put everything together and people are looking at the six trillion dollars that went into money market funds over the last, I don't know, two years, people are just saying, you know what, maybe I'm not long enough. Maybe I am ignoring what the market is telling me. Maybe I am missing out on a typical, very typical mid-cycle bull market. And that's where we are right now. It's, a, it's an interesting thought. And Brian Belsky of BMO, he came on halftime earlier today. He raised his price target to the highest on the street to 5,600. And he told us why, listen. I think we can have an opportunity to add to positions at cheaper level, Scott. But for now, we see we see that dreaded uh, uh, word momentum continuing. We think that the markets head higher as people continue to reallocate. I think people aren't talking enough about that. Reallocating back into stocks. Uh, that's Belsky. That's what Brown was just talking about, right? Yeah. Uh, not to brag, just hanging out with Belsky last week, and we were talking about career risk. And you could pretend all you want that every investment dollar comes into or out of the market based on the fundamentals, but in reality, people have a job to do. And that job is to earn a return on the capital that's been entrusted with them. And that is a huge driver in the second half of the year in both directions, right? So, so we saw a washout in September of October or October of 2022. This is the reverse version of that. Now you have the Dow, the NASDAQ, and the S&P 500, as of noon today, all making all-time highs together. That doesn't happen all the time. The last time we saw it was March 20th of this year. It's only happened 241 days since 1985. It's a fairly rare phenomenon, but when it's taking place and you're out of the market and or underweight, it's deafening. You cannot sit there and watch that go on, and not just because you feel a certain way, but there's an agency problem in investing, which is when you're running money for other people, they have expectations. And one of those expectations is you better not trail the SPX by a thousand basis points. Otherwise, you're fired. So we can all pretend that doesn't happen. But those of us who have been here for, for a while, Cameron will tell you this is a very real phenomenon. And I don't think it's played out yet.